Welcome back to Midpoint, everybody. Once again, let us welcome back former CIA analyst Lisa Roof joins us here in the studio. Now, this is interesting because now we're talking about Americans taking matters into their own hands when it comes to battling ISIS, and they are joining the Kurdish fighters in Syria. Here is a uh, soundbite from a, a gentleman named Jordan Matson from Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and see that. I am from Wisconsin in the United States. I was previously a soldier in the United States Army. The man in this video has identified as Sturdivant native Jordan Matson. In this interview, the 28-year-old explains why he left Wisconsin to join the Kurdish People's Protection Units, known as YPG. I got sick of everyone saying how bad it was but doing nothing about it. So I made up my own mind to come over here to do something about it. We now hear as many as 12 Americans maybe over there. I think that's a number that was quoted on Sunday in the talk shows here. That's who we know is out there fighting. And apparently these are American citizens. They can go over there and fight, and guess what? They can come on back in, and there's people going, wait a minute, you want them to go over and fight, be part of that, and then just walk back into the United States? Is that a real intelligence issue, a real security issue? Yes. Um, you know, th this yeah, is... Yeah, but you hesitated <laughs> a little bit, so... Um, I, I have to say, and, and again, as I mentioned earlier, I have a friend who's embedded as a journalist, and he has talked to several of these guys, and he tells me there is something, his term, something strange going on here. Uh, we have mercenaries. We know there's mercenaries fighting there. Sure. These are just g hired guns. This is something different. This is the first time that we know of that the ideology that Americans are going to fight for an ideology which is anti-ISIS. There's, there's also a sense that perhaps that they're not necessarily going over individually. Several of the people I spoke with have the belief that the United States government may have encouraged these people to go over. That's an interesting thing. I don't know that that's true or not. In terms of the intelligence threat, if they come back, you're still talking about hardened criminals. Not criminals, hardened fighters. Mm -hmm. And if you look back, if you remember during World War II, we had mercenaries who went over who were there for the duration. And they came back. They were the best fighters we had. They came back and really caused problems in this country. These are people who live a way that's very different, you know, that you can't come back and be a newscaster, for example. Um, and this is a problem because you're over in a foreign country, you are being exposed to the moderate rebels or whoever else it is. It's very unclear what's happening there. And then they come back and we just don't know. We really just don't know what these people are bringing with them, what their ideology is. It's a black hole again. Do we then need to, and would it be prudent, as far as the intelligence community is concerned, that if you go over, if you fight with ISIS, if you fight against ISIS, whatever, you are not coming back into this country until we take you, we vet you, we investigate you, and guess what? That's just the cost of doing business. You know, from a security standpoint now, talking Certainly. about the, an intelligence, if I was in that position, if I had gone over to fight against ISIS and I'm you know, patriotic and pro-U.S., and if I came back here and they said you have to be vetted through, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I'd say, great, you know, we'll talk about it. It seems that the risk in this case is people coming back not being vetted. So I do. I think that that would make sense. I also think that while they're on the ground over there, they're, you know, this we were talking about the lack of intelligence. This could be an opportunity people on the ground choosing to cooperate with the United States intelligence services. This could be an opportunity for us to get some information and figure out what's going on. How much of a good thing is it going to spin to something else here? I see where Hezbollah is now fighting pieces of Al-Qaeda. We now have the bad guys going against the bad guys here. Does that help us in any way or benefit anything that we're doing over there intelligence-wise or military-wise? Uh, potentially. You know, and, and again, that whole... It, it should weaken both sides, right, if you're looking at it from a purely military strat strategic situation. The problem is anytime you're escalating violence, it's not necessarily a good thing. And there's often a lot of civilian casualties or collateral damage, as they call mm -hmm. it. And, and again, you're talking about something outside the control of really anyone. And it's probably not a good thing. There is the idea that it should weaken both sides, but you know this is another one of those. We'll see what happens. And I a another friend of mine told me, great irony. This sounds counterintuitive, but their concern is fighting each other that they actually could end up working together. Mm -hmm. I you know that that sometimes really does happen, and that would be a problem. Got about 30 seconds left here. Uh, any reason at all at this point? I know I ask every now and then, but for us to trust Turkey. 
at all? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I well, know. they're getting along with us, Lisa. They're helping. And they're part of uh -huh. NATO. Yeah, yeah, and they're our good friends. No, you know, again, they keep in mind this enclave that they've got that's inside of yes. Syria. You know, they're looking over their shoulders, and they're in a very tough situation, I'll tell you right now. But if I was the United States, I'd be very, very careful dealing with them. Yeah, we have to keep asking, are the expendables available? Yeah, yeah, we have to <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they are right now. Yeah. I think they just made it 347 <laughs> years old, uh, at least on an average, but they might be good at this point if they work. Hey, let's put it this way. You could probably hire mercenaries and save money. Yeah, and that's what Bill O'Reilly said. I'll, I'm, don't, I don't know if Bill and I agree on much at this point, but we might have to be careful. Always a pleasure to see you, Lisa. Thanks, Thanks a lot for, for coming me. in. Later this hour, the Money Master details how the breakup at Hewlett Packard will affect the consumer. And after the break, the definition of primitive, destructive Islam with regard to the current conflicts around the world. It's coming up right here on Midpoint.